from expanding the sci-fi epic into a fully-fledged trilogy to announcing an RPG game that'll take the saga to a whole new level. Here's everything you need to know about Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. As you all know, the guy's been pretty busy with his latest project. His wife's recent reveal showed just how grand his vision truly is. Initially, Snyder said that Rebel Moon will be a two-part film. I want to do it. Do you have any interest in it? And I was like, yes, I yeah, yeah. And so he... But I guess that just wasn't enough to cover this new universe. Now, Debbie Snyder's not just speaking out of turn here. She's a producer on the film, so she clearly has a lot of insight that the rest of us don't. In a recent interview, she said that the upcoming film will just be the first of three, all of which will be released on Netflix. To Los Angeles, um, we were working, Zach was trying to get a film called 300 made. And I that actually makes a lot of sense, because Snyder has a reputation for having bold, expansive visions. I mean, the guy literally gave us a four-hour Justice League movie, so you can imagine how eager he'd be to do right by his passion project, especially considering how long he's been working on it. Because his whole idea goes all the way back to 2005. You see, Snyder's always been a big fan of Akira Kurosawa, and he also happens to be a massive Star Wars nerd. After the prequel trilogy wrapped up with the release of Revenge of the Sith, Snyder decided that he wanted to make his own Star Wars movie. That's a hard no. I said, well, can I at least come in and tell you what I think the best version of this would be? One that would provide a more complex and mature take on a galaxy far, far away. He ended up pitching the idea to Lucasfilms, but it stayed in development hell for a few years. And when Disney bought the company in 2012, it looked like Snyder's dream of directing a Star Wars movie was over before it even began. Luckily for us, Snyder's not one to give up so easily. He decided to take his ideas and spin them off into his own universe. And that's when the Rebel Moon concept started to take shape. It was initially supposed to be a TV series which would have been perfect to tell a story of this scale. Snyder started working with his longtime producer, Eric Newman, to rework the storyline, but at some point, he realized that a series just wouldn't cut it, because this story needed a full-length feature film to do it justice. All we have done, we're not... We get to fly to another place. So what can we expect to see in Snyder's next project? Well, Kurosawa inspiration is pretty telling. George Lucas himself also used Akira's works to flesh out the Star Wars narrative, and from the looks of things, Snyder's gonna do the same. What's more, Zack's gone so far as to call Rebel Moon his own personal Star Wars universe. So I expect to see a lot of the same sci-fi opera elements coming into play. From the scarce details we've gotten so far, it seems like the film will depict a small colony on the edge of a galactic empire. Sounds pretty Star Wars already, but wait, there's more. This colony is suddenly threatened by the dictator of the empire bringing his army to their gates. The character's name hasn't been revealed. So far, he's only been referred to as the Regent, which conjures up some mad Emperor Palpatine energy. However, there's a lot to set this film apart as well. For example, the protagonist is not some kind of chosen savior. Instead, she's just a girl named Korra, who ventures out into the galaxy to find allies. Her home is in jeopardy, so it's it's up to her to do whatever she can to keep the invading forces at bay. Clearly, the armies of the region are too much for the colonists to fend off on their own, and Korra will try to find the most powerful fighters in the galaxy to help them out. This unlikely hero will be played by Sofia Butella, who's joined by several other actors making up the ensemble cast. There are some major A-listers who have signed up. For real, though, every single actor on the call sheet's been involved with big budget projects. There's Ed Skrein, for one. You might know him from his role as Ajax in the first Deadpool movie. Zack's old buddy, Ray Fisher is also going to show up. He and Snyder developed a great rapport during his turn as Cyborg, and it looks like he'll have a leading role in Rebel Moon as well. Sons of Anarchy fans will be overjoyed to know that Charlie Hunnam is also playing a central character, and as if that weren't already enough, Zack somehow managed to get Anthony Hopkins on board too. We've got Oscar winners, TV royalty, and Snyder alums all joining hands for this project, so the cast list is about as solid as it can get. We'll have to wait until the movie's release in December. 2023 to see if they get a good plot to work with. But one thing's for sure, the story's just too big for a single film. I totally get why he decided to turn it into a trilogy. And in true Snyder fashion, he's also going to release multiple versions of the films. You see, each movie will have a regular cut, along with an extended director's edition. That's kind of similar to what he did with Batman vs. Superman. Snyder loves to release his works with added details, and as far as Rebel Moon is concerned, the extended versions will be 
R-rated, so we should expect to see plenty of cool new scenes whenever those additions come out. There's no word on when the R-rated versions will be released, or even if Netflix has agreed to release them in the first place. But knowing Snyder, he's gonna get his vision out there one way or another. Netflix has been having some trouble in the content department, and I can't imagine they'd say no to a big-name director who's willing to give them so much new stuff. So there's gonna be the Rebel Moon trilogy, with each film having an additional R-rated cut. That's a pretty big project in and of itself, but Snyder's not one to compromise on his vision, and he recently let something slip that revealed the absolutely staggering scale of the story. While giving an interview, Zack happened to mention yet another expansion of the film. At least the Snyder Cut, but just in its raw form, unfinished on HBO Max. And I was like, no, no. Netflix won't be getting much out of it, though, because it's not a film or even a streaming show. Rather, it's an entire RPG video game. Snyder commented on just how sprawling the game's universe will be. I'd imagine we'll get to play in an open-world setting, because that's the best way for Snyder to let fans explore each and every aspect of the saga. The fact that he's willing to talk about a game kind of shows how much work he's put into this. A trilogy is one thing, but an epic RPG video game needs about 10 times more content. Everything from NPC backstories to multiple locations had to have been made, otherwise it just wouldn't be appealing to gamers. Now, Snyder wasn't even sure if he was allowed to talk about the RPG, but that didn't stop him from revealing some interesting details. He mostly discussed how well thought out the universe is going to be, and I, for one, am excited to see what direction it takes the story in, although I'm also holding back a bit just in case the film doesn't live up to expectations. Trust no one. And I kind of feel like the video game's a risky idea, because most video games based on movies have been downright awful. They were a big deal back in the 1990s and early 2000s. Murmurs. But you'll die, huh? For all that you love, call them no mercy, huh? But if you've ever played one of them, you'd know just how little they had to offer. They mostly just let you play through the same storyline as the film, while adding little to no value to the experience. That said, Snyder's cut from a different cloth, so if he says that the in-game universe will live up to the hype, I'm gonna take his word for it. Of course, this is all gonna play out years later. For now, the release of the first film in December is what fans are gonna be looking forward to. Call them no mercy! All of the hints and details point to a sci-fi tale of massive proportions, and I sincerely hope that Snyder gets to finish his project properly this time around. That was everything we know so far about Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon trilogy and video game. 